Hello everybody. In this video, we're going to take a first look at Adobe Photoshop. We'll learn some very basic skills and get started on your very first project. With Photoshop open, the first thing I need to do is create a new document. And I can do that here under File, File, New. The new document screen will open, and here I'll find that I have a number of different choices. I can either type in or input in an exact dimension for my new document. Uh, that can be measured by pixels, inches, centimeters. I can make it whatever I want. Let's say, for instance, I wanted to make a document that is 512 pixels by 512 pixels and I can then create it. And here is the beginning of my new document. In fact, this dimension, 512 by 512, is very commonly used uh, when creating textures for 3D models. Another option, I'm going to close this document here. Another option is to go to File, New, and select one of the templates here. I'm going to go to the Photo Templates, and I'm going to select the default Photoshop size, which is 7 by 5 inches at 300 pixels per inch. In fact, if I change this back to pixels, you'll see what our uh, pixel count will be. We can take a look at the inches, 7 by 5 inches. Uh, and I can also choose whether I want the orientation to be horizontal or vertical. For this document, I'm going to select vertical, and I will create. For this first assignment, we are going to be creating a collage, or a piece of art made by sticking various different materials such as photographs and pieces of paper or fabric onto a backing. However, we're going to do it all in Photoshop. And this particular assignment, uh, this particular collage is going to be a portrait. It was partially inspired by Mr. Potato Head. So I'm going to, for my example here in this video, I'm going to start with a potato. I will do a search for images of potatoes. <clears throat> One recommendation when you do this assignment is to change, uh, go to Tools and Look at uh, look for images that are large. You'll get a better result by uh, narrowing down your search to larger images. And I'm going to start. Uh, well, I'm going to find a nice image of a potato that we can use as our starting point for this. And I think I will pick this one here. So with that image selected, I'm going to right click on it and say save image as make sure you know where you're saving your images you're going to be finding a lot of different images for this assignment uh, i will save it and i will return to photoshop okay now i'm back in photoshop we're going to be taking a look at a couple different ways that we can bring images into Photoshop that we can work with uh, when creating our collage. So one way is to go to File, Open, and I'll find the image that I just saved when I did my Google image search. I'll select that and open it up. And here is the image of my potato, a very large image of a potato. Now what you'll notice is here I have these two tabs. I have 
my Untitled One, which is the document that we created a few moments ago. And I have my Potato JPEG that I just saved. I want to bring this Potato into my new document that I created. So one way that I can do that is I can drag this tab off of this shelf here, select my Move tool, and simply drag it into my other document. And now that I'm done with uh, this, this document here, I'll go ahead and close it. So here is my, the beginning of my collage, and, uh, and I have this potato that's going to be the starting point for this portrait that I'm going to create. Now, let's take a look at a little bit of the uh, Photoshop interface here. Here we have our tools, and the one that I currently have activated is this Move tool here. And because that tool is activated, I can move the potato around on my, uh, in my workspace. Another thing that I'd like to point out is that we have what are called layers. And you'll see that I currently have two layers. I have a background layer and I have layer one. The potato is on layer one. If you look at this eyeball icon, that indicates visibility, and if I click on it, it will hide that layer, or if I uh, reactivate it by clicking on it, we'll see the layer again. Uh, we also have the background layer, which I can also hide and unhide. Let's hide the background temporarily, because I want to show you that the potato is surrounded by this uh, white here, this uh, white color, uh, which I might not necessarily want in, in my, uh, my collage. Uh, the other thing is that perhaps the potato is not oriented uh, in the direction that I want it oriented. Remember, we're going to make a portrait out of this, and uh, I could use this orientation if I wanted the head to be a kind of wide head, I think I want to actually rotate this. Uh, now you'll see that we don't actually have any tools for rotating here, uh, but what we can do with the layer selected is go to Edit, Transform. And we have a number of different ways that we can work with uh, transforming the uh, things that we have on this layer. So with transform, I could come over here to rotate 90 degrees clockwise, and we'll have it oriented like this. Uh, and this perhaps is better. This is more like what I want to work with for this portrait that I'm going to create. Uh, let's try a couple other uh, ways that we can do that. So I'm going to return to edit, transform, uh, I did the uh, clockwise. I can also rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise. I can rotate it 180 degrees. I can go to transform and I can also select rotate. And then with notice my mouse, notice the handle, I'll come over to this corner and you'll notice that I can rotate it uh, to any orientation that I want it at. When I'm done rotating, I'll press Enter. Other transforms that we can look at. I'll go to Edit, Transform, and notice that we can also scale it by selecting Scale. Once again, bringing my mouse uh, cursor to one of these corners here, uh, I can make it smaller or I can make it larger. Now, if I hold Shift while dragging the corners, I can do a non-uniform scale. Uh, 
When I'm done scaling to complete the action, I press Enter on my keyboard. Another transform I can do, once again, make sure that you have your layer selected. Go to Edit, Transform, and notice that I can flip it horizontally or vertically as well. Uh, I'm going to flip this one horizontally. In fact, there's a number of different transforms that we can do here. Uh, we won't be looking at all of them today, uh, but the ones specifically that we looked at were scale, rotate. We looked at some of these uh, where we can rotate in exact 90 degree or 180 degree increments and also flipping horizontally and vertically. I'd also like to bring your attention to this tool, the free transform tool, which will do many of these same operations but with one single tool. So what you'll notice is with that tool, with the free transform tool activated, I can come in here with my mouse on this corner and I can scale it. If I bring my mouse to the corner, uh, not right on top, but a little bit off of it, I'll get a rotation manipulator. And uh, this tool makes it easy to do a number of different operations with one single tool. I think I'm happy with its current orientation. Uh, remember that whenever you're done using uh, those transform tools, you press Enter to complete the action. So I've returned to my web browser, and I'm going to look for some more features that I can add to this portrait that I'm going to create. And perhaps I'll start with looking for a nose for my character. Now, we could create a nose out of another uh, vegetable if we wanted, uh, or root vegetable, whatever. Uh, I'm going to go ahead, and I'm just going to look up nose and see if we find a nice uh, nose that we can use for this character here. Or perhaps I'll just pick, find a nice portrait that I can use where I can find a nose that I could give my character. I'm still looking at large images here. Uh, that'll give us a better resolution to work with. And I think I'm going to go with this picture here. I'm going to take his nose and apply it to uh, the portrait that we have going on. So once again, I'll right click on this, save image as, making sure it's saving as an image and not a web page or some other format. And I will save it. And while we're at it, let's look for some eyes for our character. I could choose some of these eyes here. Some of them look very interesting. Uh, or if I want to do something a little more unusual, maybe I'll look specifically at animal eyes. And let's see what we can find. This is an interesting one. I'm going to save that. Save image as. And I'll find another eye. Actually, some of those look pretty interesting. Let's see what, what we have here. Maybe there are a couple of other options. This one's nice. Maybe we'll try that one. Notice that this one wants to save it as a WEBP file. That's not going to work for me. So what I'm going to do is return here, right click, and I will say copy image. OK, now I've uh, returned to Photoshop. And I'm going to bring in those two different eyes for this portrait that I'm creating. Uh, remember that I saved the images two different ways. We've got two different eyes that we're going to use for this, and I saved it two different ways. 
in Google Images, it allowed me to save one of them as a JPEG image, and I can simply go to File, Open, and we can open that one up. Actually, I'll also open up the image that we're going to use that we're going to take a nose from. And then I had that uh, third image of another eye that it would not allow me to save, but you remember I copied it. So what I will do is I will go to File, New, and it is currently on my clipboard. So I will uh, create a new document from the clipboard, and I will simply paste it using Control V on here, like that. So we'll now start bringing these different features into our image here where we're creating a portrait. And let's take a look at how we'll do that. You'll remember I dragged the potato in here very quickly, very easily, uh, but we'll look at a couple other ways that we can uh, work with this. And to demonstrate that, I'm going to go to Window, Arrange, and you'll notice that there are a bunch of different options here. We'll take a look at the one on the very top, Tile Vertically. This will show me the four documents that I currently have open. Uh, and what I can do then is quickly switch between them or among them. Uh, I'm going to take this eye here and I'm simply going to drag it into my file here. Now, uh, we'll take the nose from this file. I don't need his whole face. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this hand button to pan. It was just a mistake there. Use the hand to come over here. And in fact, I just want to select the nose. So what I'll do is I'm going to come here to the selection tool. Currently it's set to oval. I'm going to hold my mouse down on it, select the rectangular tool, and I'll simply select the area that I want, change to my move tool, and drag it in here. We'll do the same with this eye now. Once again, I'm using this hand tool to move it over into the area that I want. Uh, I'm not seeing the whole eye yet, so what I will do is I will use the magnifying glass tool. Notice that it has a plus on it, meaning that I'm magnifying. If I press down Alt on my keyboard, I can zoom out. Now, this time, instead of uh, doing a marquee selection of a rectangle, I'm going to pick this other tool right below it, the lasso tool, and I'm simply going to draw around what I want to uh, drag in. Release, change to my move tool, and I'll drag it into my scene. Now that I have these three features in here uh, to create my collage, uh, if I'm done with these, I can simply close them. I'll leave them open for the time being, uh, but I'll select this tab. Once again, I will go to Window, Arrange, but this time I will consolidate all two tabs, which will bring us back to that original format that we we're in. I can still go among all these different images here, but we're working on this one here. As we briefly looked at uh, earlier, layers are going to be very important for you. And if you remember, you can easily hide as well as show different layers. Uh, whatever you select for your move tool, it's going to move what is on that layer. 
So currently I'm on layer four, which is this eye here, and I can move it wherever I want. Uh, but if I want to move these other layers, I need to select the layer, and then I can move it as well. Uh, this makes it very easy to switch among all the different layers to position everything where you want to position it. So we'll work with this eye first. And I think that I want to scale it down and maybe rotate it a little bit for this portrait. So let's take a look at that. The layer selected. I will go to Edit, Free Transform, and I'll scale it down and perhaps rotate it a little bit and we'll place it right about here. Maybe I'll scale it down just a little bit more. And then remember, when you're done with that operation, you press Enter. Now, currently my layers are simply named layer one, two, three, and four. This is not very descriptive. It doesn't really matter if you only have a few layers in your scene, uh, but if you end up with lots and lots of layers, it might get a little confusing, in which case it might make sense to rename the layer. I'm simply going to move my mouse over to the layer and double click on it, and I think I'll call this one RI. That way, uh, later on, I'll be able to easily know what's actually on that layer. Now, I don't remember which one of these layers is the eye, the, the left eye. Uh, of course, I could just hide and unhide these and find out which is which, and in this case, it's layer two. But there is a, actually another more simple, easy way to do it, and that is to right-click on it. And then you have these different layers that you can select from. I'm going to select layer two, which is, in fact, the eye. Uh, I will go ahead and go to Edit, Free Transform, and we'll adjust this one as well for this portrait that we're creating. And with that in position, I will press Enter. While I'm at it, I'll go ahead and rename this. Rename this layer. Li, and we'll move on to the nose. Right click at the nose, layer three, and we can position that, put that in place. And let's say I want it right about here. I think that looks good. A couple other ways that we can work with layers. Right now you can see here that uh, part of this image is covering up the eye, and maybe I don't want that. There are a couple ways I can deal with this, uh, and we'll take a look at that now. So another thing that's very convenient about these layers is that we can reorganize them. Whatever is on the top here, you can see that that's the right eye. And then we have the nose. Let me just quickly rename that nose. We've got the left eye. Uh, I can take the left eye and left mouse drag it on top of the nose. And now uh, the eye no longer covers the nose. I could take the nose and drag it to the very top so that it is uh, layered on top of everything. Uh, or we can drag it down below so it's below. Uh, the two eyes, but above the potato. You can adjust these however you wish. Uh, I'm going to actually drag it up to the top, and we'll deal with this a little bit differently than uh, through layers. I'm going to cut out these areas so that the image of the nose is no longer rectangular. Now, another thing that you should be aware of is that if you put your mouse over any of these tools, for instance, the magnifying glass, it should tell us what it will do.
and you'll see that with my mouse on it, I had to actually select the tool first. It says Zoom Tool Z, so Z is the hotkey for it, and what does it do? It magnifies or reduces the view of the image. So, with the magnifying glass selected, I'm going to zoom in by clicking on, on that area. Uh, I can also just hold down the right mouse button and interactively zoom like this, in and out. And I'm going to come back over here to the lasso tool, which we looked at earlier. Lasso tool makes freehand selections. And I'm just going to draw around the nose. And there we go. Now, I have a little problem here. If I hit the delete key, it deletes what I have selected. I'm going to undo that by uh, typing control Z. I want to invert my selection. And I will do that by going to select inverse. And now if I hit delete, I have the nose. I'll go back to the magnifying glass and zoom back out so that we can see the whole image. Now currently, and this can be very confusing for beginning students in Photoshop, I still have uh, the nose selected. Notice that uh, if I zoom in on it, you'll see what looks like some marching ants going around the nose. Before I continue working on this, I need to uh, deselect. And the way I can do that is go to Select, Deselect. Or I can use the hotkey combination of Control D. And now I don't have anything selected. Currently, my background is not visible. And I'll click here to make it visible once again. Uh, let's say that I don't want to have the background be white. Uh, there are a number of different ways that we can change this background color. I'm only going to show you one today. Uh, but with the background selected, I'm going to go to Edit, Fill, and You'll find a drop down where we can choose. We have a number of different selections here. Uh, I could change it to either white, 50% gray, or black. I can change it to my foreground or background color, which we'll cover in a later video. Uh, or I can change it to any color I desire uh, by clicking on color. Here we have all the different hues. as well as uh, adjusting the, uh, the brightness of it, as well as the saturation level of the color. Uh, perhaps I'll go with this kind of muted green color here, and I will say OK. Now I'll click on OK, and I've got a new background color here. Problem, of course, is that we have this white area here, which I really don't want on my collage. So I'm going to get rid of that by selecting the layer that the white is on, in this case the potato. Uh, once again I'll select my lasso tool and I'll simply draw around it. For the purposes of a collage it really isn't going to matter if you're absolutely exact. And in later videos we'll look at more uh, precise ways of uh, making selections. I will invert my selection and I will delete. Remember to deselect either by going to select deselect or using the hotkey combination of control D. Uh, I'd like to find a few more features that I can add to my portrait. So I'm going to return to my web browser. 
And let's find a mouth that we can use for a character. You can do lots of different searches. Uh, of course, I just looked up portrait so that I could find full faces and then find a nice uh, mouth for my character. And let's see, what would be a good one? Uh, we'll try this guy's mouth right here. So I'm going to save the image. We'll also look for some ears for our character. Let's save this one. Some hair. I'm going to use a lion's mane. Maybe find something a little higher resolution. We tried this one. And perhaps a shirt. and I'll return to Photoshop. Now that we've returned to Photoshop, let's take a look at another way that we can bring these images into our Photoshop file. Uh, remember that I still have all of these open, but because I don't need them anymore, I think I will close them. And I will go to uh, the folder where I have these images saved. And let's take a look at, we'll take a look at the ear first. So I'm going to simply this time drag the ear from Explorer into my scene. Notice that it actually put it on top of the layer that I currently had selected, uh, but we can rearrange that very quickly, very easily. Uh, now, I'm going to scale it down. I can do this initially when it, it's first brought in. And I can rotate it, and we'll place it right about here. And I'll press Enter. Now, this is a little different than what we were looking at before. In fact, what I want you to notice is on these layers, you'll notice that this layer has this little additional icon in the corner here indicating that it is not a regular layer. Let me show you how it's different. I'm going to select my lasso tool, and I'm going to select the area that I want to cut out. I'm going to invert my selection, and I'll hit delete to get the uh, area around the ear so it's no longer there. Notice that it will not allow me to do that. It says, could not complete your request because the smart object is not directly editable. We might go over smart objects in a later video. Uh, but what you should understand is that it is referencing this image. It's referencing the original file right now. And we need to break that connection uh, before we can actually work with it uh, more thoroughly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to this layer, right click on it, and I will select Rasterize Layer. This will Modify it, it'll create it into a regular layer, and now I can quickly and easily delete what I don't want. I'm going to deselect by typing Control D, and there I have an ear. To create the other ear, to create the left ear, 
I'm going to duplicate this layer. There are a couple different ways I can duplicate it. I could simply right click on the layer and say duplicate layer. And then select my move tool and move it. But I'm going to show you another way. And this actually brings up an important point. I have this layer selected. Let's say you want to get rid of a layer. Select the layer. And you can use this trash can icon here to delete it. Another way that I can duplicate this layer is by selecting the Move tool, holding down the Alt button. Notice that my icon changed. And simply left mouse dragging it. And that creates a second layer. I'm going to flip this layer, edit, transform, flip horizontal, and I will place it. Perhaps I'll reorganize my layers so that we can see it better. And there it is. We'll look at that workflow one more time by bringing the mouth in. So once again, I'll go to my uh, folder here where I have those images. Uh, this was the image I decided to take the uh, mouth from. So I'll just drag it into my file here. Uh, reorganize it so that perhaps that layer is at the top. we got to remember it's a smart object right now. Let's rasterize it first. Right click, rasterize. Now it's a regular layer. Uh, and we will select the mouth. And again, with this kind of assignment, being exact is really not important. In fact, uh, some of the inexactness of, of these tools can actually be, I would say, a feature. Um, I'm going to invert my selection by going to select invert and delete. There's the mouth. I think we might run into a little problem here, uh, but I will deselect, move the mouth down. You'll notice that we get this stuff that I don't want. Uh, that's a simple fix. I'll, I'll just use my marquee selection tool this time, select that area, delete, control D. And there's the mouth for my character. Uh, let's take that, maybe I'll rename it, go out mouth. Uh, I'll just take a look at a couple of other layers while I'm at it, maybe rename them as well. Select my mouth layer and I will do a free transform on it. And we'll just play around a little bit with the scale and placement of it. One of the fun things about this assignment is that actually just the way that you place the objects on the face can really drastically change the look of your character. Uh, you can see that here I could have the mouth and it could be small and it could be way up here or I could bring the mouth down here, make it bigger, and it creates a very different looking character. I think I like this placement. Uh, maybe I'll play around a little bit with its orientation, see if I like anything with that a little bit better. Maybe give it a little bit of a tilt and complete the operation by pressing enter on my keyboard. We'll go ahead and bring in the last two features that uh, we found using Google Image Search. I'm going to bring in the hair as well as the shirt. Uh, this time I think I'll go ahead and just open them up. In here I'll open up the shirt and I will also open up the lion image which we'll be using for the hair. There they are. I'll come here to window, arrange, and we'll say tile all vertically so that we can see all three at the same time. Uh, perhaps we'll start with the shirt. I'll select my move tool and we'll just go to uh, this document here, drag it in here. There it is. And we can go over to 
the lion as well. I'm going to use my magnifying glass and using my left mouse button, I'll zoom out. There we go. <laughs> um, drag it over here this way. And let's see, we'll go ahead and select some of the hair here for our character. That should be good. And I'll drag my selection into my document as well. Uh, now that I have both of uh, these images here in, in my document that I'm working on, I'll go ahead and go to Window, Arrange, and Consolidate All to Tabs. So I'm working in just this document. Maybe rename these. We'll call this Layer Hair, which is the lion's mane, and this one I will call shirt. Hide the lion's mane temporarily, and we'll start working with the shirt here. I'm going to scale it up some by going to transform scale, or I could use free transform. And we'll just drag it down here like that press enter and I will rearrange my layers so I'll bring uh, the shirt layer down just above the background layer and underneath the potato layer uh, we can eliminate some of the areas of the layer that we don't want simply by selecting it and deleting And we'll take a look at the hair now. Oops, make sure we get into the proper layer. And perhaps scale it. Maybe play around a little bit with the arrangement of it and see where we want it. I think what I'll do is drag the hair layer underneath the potato layer. Uh, that way I'll be able to see the ears and, and the, the shape of the potato head and everything. Um, maybe just for fun, I might duplicate this layer the hair layer, and I'll drag it on top of the potato as well, and then I'll simply delete this lower part of it. That way I'll get a little more of a hairline up here. And that's pretty much it. I would say at this stage what I might do is just play around a little with um, with the placement. I'm going to select my move tool uh, and I might just adjust the placement of the different objects in the um, in the composition or I might clean up uh, parts of it a little bit just to give it a little bit more pleasing uh, appearance. But more or less, that's how you can very simply create a fun collage, in this case a portrait, using some very simple techniques and tools in Photoshop. Uh, there are two more things I should just mention before wrapping this up, however. Um, I recommend saving two files. Uh, two files. One would be a working file in case you want to go back and work on this later on. So what I'm going to do is go to File, Save As, save it onto my computer, and I'm going to save this as a Photoshop file. 
I'll give it a name. Make sure you know where you're saving it to and save it. Now this file will be very large because it's a Photoshop file and it has all the information regarding layers and, and so on. This is a working file. Uh, but what you're going to want to turn in for your assignments are going to be images, just a simple flat image with no layers. And here's how we can do that. Once again, I'll go to File, Save As, decide where I'm going to save it to. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and keep the name Collage Portrait. Uh, but under the Save As type, I'm going to select, in this case, JPEG. And I'll save it as well. Let's take a look at the difference between these two files. I'm going to go ahead and close everything that I have currently open. And if I go to File Open, you'll notice that I have my image and I have my Photoshop file. And if we look at the details for them, you'll notice that the Photoshop file is quite large. It is uh, 31,173 kilobytes, uh, but the JPEG image that I created from it is only 795. Let's open them both up. You'll notice that they look the same. However, my JPEG image doesn't have any layers in it. It's really not a working file. Uh, however, my Photoshop file has all the layers and I can continue working with it. I can hide, unhide the layers, I can bring in new layers, and so on. Anyway, I hope that this video was useful for you. Thank you for watching.